With the API destinations feature, EventBridge can integrate with services outside of AWS by using REST API calls. This enables developers to route events to existing providers that integrate with EventBridge like Zendesk, PagerDuty, TriggerMesh, or MongoDB. Additionally, you can use other SaaS endpoints for applications like Slack or Contentful, or any other type of API or webhook. It can also provide an easier way to ingest data from serverless workloads into Splunk without needing to modify application code or install agents. API destinations are third-party targets outside of AWS that you can invoke with an HTTP request. EventBridge invokes the endpoint and delivers the event as a payload within the request. You can use any preferred HTTP methods such as GET or POST, and you can use input transformers to change the payload format to match your target. In this video, I'll show you how to set up an API destination and route a test event to a debugging site that echoes webhook calls. So to get started, let's go to webhook.site. This is a debugging site that gives us a unique URL that we can use as an endpoint to send API calls and get them echoed back so we can see what's in the headers and in the payloads. So once you get to this site, just click on copy to clipboard and we'll be using that URL in just a few moments. Back in EventBridge on the left hand side, in the left menu, just go to API destinations under integration. Now the first thing to do here is to create a connection. Every API destination needs a connection and this stores the credentials of how to connect to that API endpoint. So in this case, I'm just going to call this my connection. And the authorization type in this case, I'm going to use API key because there's no username and password or credentials, but in a production connection, typically you would have this type of authentication. I'll put in API key and API value since we're not actually going to use those and click on create. Once the connection's created and it's got a status of authorized, which means that it's working, we go to API destinations and we're going to create an API destination. So here I'll just call this my API destination. The endpoint is the webhook.site endpoint that I copied earlier. I'm going to use a post. And here you get to set an invocation limit. So to make sure that we don't overload a third party site with the sheer number of requests, because EventBridge can scale up uh, really to almost any amount of traffic, we're going to set this to 10 per second. Now in the event we go beyond this, EventBridge will queue up the request to make sure that we never exceed that number there. Now I'll use an existing connection of my connection, the one we just set up, and then I'll click on create. So now that shows we've got an active API destination with the connection parameters that we specified. Now nothing will happen until we now create a rule that will route to this destination as a target. So next I'll click on this menu on the left and open up the rules section. And I've got a custom event bus I'm going to use for this called my custom bus. And then we create a rule. So I'll just call this my rule and I'll create a custom pattern. And here we're going to say that anything with a source of my custom app is going to be matching this rule. So I'll just save that event pattern. Then I want to use my custom bus and then use a target of API destination. We're going to use an existing one, the one we just set up called API destination. It's picked up the webhook.site API endpoint and also the connection we configured. Now optionally, we could configure the input and change things here. So in a production application, typically you would do this to make sure that you can configure the API call in the way that you want to for your payload. But right now, we just want to see what is being sent through to webhook.site. Leaving this option set also means that it will configure a role that has the permissions necessary to invoke this resource. So with that configured, we just hit create. And now we've got a rule in place that will match any event with a source of my custom app and send it on to our API destination. Now to send a test event in the front end, we go to the event buses section just here and click on send events in the top right hand corner. I'm going to use my custom bus and then set an event source of my custom app. So anything sent to that event source will then trigger that rule. So really this can say anything, my detail type, 
and our payload we'll set this to message hello world okay so all I have to do now is then send this event now this is then going to appear in webhook.site so let's just send this that confirms that the event's been sent and we see the event has now arrived in this webhook.site test site so it shows you the raw content of the payload that was received but also all of the headers that were sent as well so you see the API key of API value that I passed along there so this is a really useful tool for when you're configuring API destinations just to make sure that the content is exactly what you expect it to be before you send it on to your real API destination in serverless land you'll find there is a pattern that helps you deploy this if you're using the AWS serverless application model or AWS SAM to build your applications you can deploy this as part of your application it will configure the connection and API destination for you and you'll find that at serverlessland.com forward slash patterns for links to the resources shown in this video visit s12d.com forward slash about events